Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I have something brand new for you on the channel here. I'm getting everything set up here, you know, technically speaking, but, um, oh man, do I have some terribility for you all. Hold on just a second here, let me shut off the volume, so that way I'm not listening to myself, because it's bad enough that you all have to listen to me, let alone that I have to listen to me. Um, but... What I have for you today, all right, I'm all set up. What I have for you all today is something brand new, something just terrible, and that is Terrible Watches Live. So I have made a terrible mistake, my friends. Um, it was a premeditated mistake. I really should have known better. But, um, you know, luckily, uh, my Patreon patrons and such give me the ability to make terrible mistakes for your entertainment. And th the mistake that I made was not just to get some terrible watches for the channel. Um, by, by the way, yeah, Seiko haters, I mean it. Um, but anyways, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the terrible mistake that I made was to sign up for a monthly or a watch of the month club. Um, these are a relatively new innovation where basically you sign up at, at a, a tier. You, you sign up, not like a tier is in the tiers, you're going to be crying when you get your watches, but a tier in terms of, you know, you can sign up and you can sign up at the $29 a month uh, tier, you can sign up at the $99 a month tier, you can sign up and I think there's a $299 a month tier, and holy crap, all the crows in the neighborhood are going crazy, they don't like good watches either, but um, I signed up twice, <laughs> I signed up for for one of these services at both the twenty nine dollar tier and at the ninety nine dollar tier, and in fact, uh, that was that was a big mistake. And in fact, I signed up for I think three months of each just to see how bad it was going to get. Now, here's the fun thing: we're going to have a little bit of a meta game here because I signed up for both of these tiers. And I don't actually know which package was meant to be which tier. And so one of the big questions we have today is, can we figure out which watch was $99 and which watch was $29? Because I think that's going to be an open question. What's inside these boxes? I really don't know. It's probably not going to be good. In fact, it's probably going to be freaking awful. But nevertheless, that's going to be a... Um, that's going to be a big question. It's going to be an open question for us all. And then on top of that, my buddy Chris, who is a constant supporter and troll of the channel, um, has managed to stock the pond, so to speak. Just in case whatever's inside these boxes is not that bad. Oh, we got something bad to cover you. So... Got that. One other thing I'd like to do is introduce the new sheriff in town. What I have right here is a new piece of gadgetry that I have picked up for the channel. And it is this little guy right here. This, my friends, this is a time grapher. And basically what this is designed to do is you take a mechanical watch and you place it in here and it then measures with high precision the rate of the watch, the rate that it's beating at. And that gives you a good sense of a watch's accuracy. So uh, let's go ahead. I'll just show it off first. Um, here we go. Well, let's use a good watch. This is the Tudor Pelagos here. And drop it in the time grapher. And what we can see here is that once it detects the beat, see, it's, there you go. It's beating along, and I'm talking, so that's making things trickier. Okay. That doesn't quite seem right. Okay, yeah, there you go. Three seconds a day fast. You know what? I can live with that. And this gives us a sense of some other measurements there. And in fact, we can try different positions, etc. But what we can see by this is that this is just like a, a freaking terrible... Uh, I'm sorry, this is a freaking fine watch right here. Plus three seconds a day, no problem there. Let's put a watch on here which is not freaking fine. How about this little guy? This is the um, Seiko 5, whatever the heck this thing is. The one all the Seiko fanboys are always about. And let's see what this one's doing. Come on. Plus 47 seconds per day. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Oh, Nick, hold on. Wait a second. No, it's magnetized. Well, the funny thing is I also own a demagnetizer, and I can confirm to you that this watch is not magnetized. It's just awful. And so, yeah, that's pretty excellent. We can try a different position just in case. Yeah. 
still crappy. So um, this is going to be sort of the, uh, <laughs> this will be our source of evidence as to whether we're a watch that we happen to get through this process is truly terrible at least in the movement sense, or just terrible in the everything else sense. So, um, yeah, that's that's a thing. So, anyways, let's go on ahead and jump into uh, our very first of our two terrible knife boxes here. Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Um, First off, we got to look at the, the watch here. This is a kimono. Not like a kimono, not like the Japanese robe sort of thing. No, it's a Komono. Um, and in fact, the Komono Wilt Winston Monte Carlo Croc. Oh, oh no, it's quartz, so we can't use the time graph. Okay, well that that's okay. Um, <laughs> okay. let's go ahead and pop this little guy open and see what joy lies. And remember, people, I am stupid enough that I paid twenty nine bucks for this. And bam, we have right here inside this box the perfect blend of vision plus timing. Not vision and timing, <coughs> vision plus timing. And of course, uh, we need to look in this before we go any further here. The future, perfectly timed, complete with a chick standing there. Our story, welcome to Komono, a community of dreamers. Oh, they're dreamers and designers uh, dedicated to perfectly timed accessories rooted in the Belgian tradition of fierce dedication to quality and craft. Okay, so the Belgians are involved here. That's that's fine. Uh, it's global fashion at our fingertips. Our oh, man, global fashion. Oh, man, and look at this. I could buy these sunglasses. They're upselling me in a $29, or maybe this is the $100 watch. Oh, man. Okay, so now that we've figured out what the Belgians think is fashionable, let's go on ahead and jump into it and see just how bad our little Komodo dragon here is going to be. Bam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At first blush, this is maybe not so terrible as one might expect. Is it stopped? Is it meant to be stopped? Okay, it is stopped, but there we go. Okay, so I'll pull out this little guy. Let's see if it actually starts ticking. Okay, hey, it's ticking. That's actually not so awful here. Um, We have right here a, um, a, 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 oh, there's a, a, here we go. Pull the plastic off here. I wouldn't want you to get a bad impression of this little guy. So what we have here is actually not a wholly unattractive sunbursty sort of dial. So you can see here, yeah, that's that's impressive. Um, not so bad. You've got ourselves a little bit of a Bauhaus sort of aesthetic uh, with, of course, all of the various numbers. One, two, three, kimono, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, so the, the, they're all on there. That's that's pretty nice. Um, the, the, the hands are relatively subtle here. So we, can, we, we got that. There's no date window because... Because after all, uh, who needs a date window except most people, I guess. Um, let's see. Okay, good. I was able to pull that out there, and let's see if we we can set it. Hey, good. We can set it. Interesting. Um, that th 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 that that's good at least. Can we set it backwards? We can set it backwards. Okay. Um, and yeah, we'll just call it six and be done with it. Push it back in there. And indeed. So immediately, you, you may be thinking to yourself, okay, well, Nick, what's what's so bad about this? Um, at some level, not that much. That's the advantage that a quartz watch has. It's like a quartz watch can only be so crappy. A, qu a quartz watch can, like, even the world's worst quartz watch is probably going to be pretty accurate, um, uh, generally speaking. So in terms of timekeeping, you know what? This is probably a fine little piece, assuming it keeps running for more than the 10 minutes or so that, um, yeah. So um, th 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 there's that. There are some definite tells that it's not the highest quality of pieces. If we look at the little second hand there, we can see that although it hits occasionally one of the indices, it's um, not super inclined to do so. That's that maybe not ideal, but it certainly is a thing. Um, we can see here some other tells of the uh, quality here. Oh, here, well, let's pop this out. I mean, to start with this band, um, this is croc, by the way, and there's got to be like a, a, a K in there, as in this is a croc of crap, um, because this really... I don't know that I believe that any animal has ever been involved in the making of this band, let alone a crocodile. Um, maybe there is some kind of a leather in there at some point in time, maybe, like there's a little tiny strip, but I'm not really seeing it. Practically speaking, it feels sort of like a plastic or a foam uh, of some variety. Can we stretch it? No, it doesn't stretch like a plastic. Maybe there is a little leather in there somewhere. Either way, I'm not super impressed by it. On the back side here, what we've got is a just beautifully reflective case back. 
After all, I am the knight. Um, and I am the Winston. Oh, oh, excellent. Okay. Water resistant, three atmospheres, which means basically barely water resistant. Um, it is splash safe, stainless steel back. If they're bagging or bragging about the fact that the back is stainless, that's probably not great. We have a serial number. This is serialized. Okay. And then we got the company. All righty. So there's your kimono. Um, your kimono dragon here. Is this actually... I wonder if this is mineral crystal? This feels like it could be... Nah, it's probably plastic. Here, let's, let's check. Got myself a little spring bar tool. Actually, I bet that's real. That's mineral. It's not sapphire, certainly, but that's nice at least. It's not just like, you know, saran wrap. That's that's a plus. Um, oy, 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 oy. This is absolutely not the greatest watch ever. But again, we come to the simple fact that because this is a quartz watch, chances are this is going to be running like uh, if I were to put it on a time grapher, and, you know, quartz time graphers are really expensive because they're a whole different affair. Um, we'd probably be running like plus, you know, maybe plus 0.1 seconds a day. That's usually where things run in terms of accuracy. So is this a watch you could wear and probably be happy with? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, would I recommend that you do so? No, absolutely not. Let's see here. Oh, here's the little area to pop the back off of here. Hey, let's go ahead and give this a little shot, shall we? Hey, let's do a live disassembly. See how this goes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so first off, I got to highlight the fact that that took like zero effort. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Um, this, is, this is excellent. Um, we figured out where all the metal went and where it stopped. Inside here, we have the world's tiniest little movement here, uh, which is spectacular. Um, let's see here. Oh, hold on. Let me go grab my zoom lens. Oh, it's zoom time, baby. We are zooming. All right. So we'll zoom on in on this little quartz movement right here and take a look at what we got. We have, okay, it's a Miyota movement. That's not so bad, right? Miyota Company, Japan. All right, no jewels, yeah, no, no, no shit. Uh, yeah, Japan, little tiny battery up in there. Right here, you see the little wire wrapping on the stepper motor. Nice, and then the crown goes 15 freaking feet in there. Oh, nice. So, this is probably the cheapest quartz movement one can probably reasonably source, and um, they have managed to do so. So, hey, there you go. That kind of works. So, um, there we go. Let's go ahead and put this little buy back together. Take some 10-weight nano oil. Put a little bit in there just for old time's sake. And then we'll go ahead and seal it back up. All right. Let's pop this back on. Was that really all it took? Yeah, that is all that it took. All right, cool. All righty, so um, there's your kimono dragon. Uh, kimono, I'm sorry. That's a, uh, that's a thing. Now, look, if I paid $29 for this, I'm not super thrilled. I'm going to be honest with you there. Because this is sort of the equal of anything I would buy on Amazon for maybe five or ten bucks. They they have on their, the, the website for this particular uh, watch, uh, watch of the month affair, um, they have on the website something like the retail price of each one of these things will, you know, tell you it will be in the uh, 30 the, the $45 range or whatever it is. I, no, I think they give like a much higher number, like 150 or something like that. You know what? That may well be true. But would I actually pay $29 for this? No, absolutely not. Especially when there were wonderful uh, watches out there. Like, this is a $29 watch from Casio. Much better movement. Solar charging. All sorts of different things going on here. This is actually featureful. This is just the kimono. So, um, in terms of your kimono dragon here, honestly, not super impressed. But the thing is, we don't actually even know that this was the $29 one. For all we know, this could be the $300 or the, 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 the $100 one. So let's go ahead and pop open the other one and see what we've got in here. So uh, right here, we have our other option. The box itself is unmarked. Oh, that's that's looking sketchy. Um, oh, here we go. This is a Nautis uh, the, 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 for the open seas. Nautis, right there, Nautis. Oh, yeah. Anything else? Nautis. Oh, 375 bucks. Oh, oh, oh. The MSRP of this watch is 375 bucks, which is the manufacturer's silly rip-off price. There you go. Um, well, actually, for all I know, the Nautis could be amazing. Um, so let's go ahead and let the box drop open here and 
figure out. Come on, Nidus. Come out of here. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Hey, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> nice. Let's see what we got here from the Nautis. My bet is that this is the $99 one because it's showing a few hallmarks of being a slightly more expensive watch. Um, namely, it's got a bracelet on there, which is actually... That appears to actually be a bracelet. That's nice. Um, it has um, some subdials. I wonder if they're actually working. That's a good question. Um, it has actual plastic all over the links here. So we're going to get the real watch unboxing sort of experience here as I, I take off all of the various plastic of this little affair here. Let's unpeel, unpeel. So, yeah, um, this definitely feels a little bit higher end than the other one. Hey, for all I know, may I haven't looked closely. Maybe it's just amazing in every other way, and the Nautis is going to make me just look terrible here. But, um... Yeah, let's pop this off. Oh, come on, you little bugger. I have to take this off. Be okay, the little pull tab just pulled out. That's that's awesome. But even the pull tab's like, nope, I'm out of here. Screw you, Nautis. Then you got yourself a problem. Okay, pull that. Beautiful. And here we go. And we have everything all set. So, um, looking at the Nautis here, uh, let's go ahead and kind of just uh, take the little tour here. So, what we can see, uh, it's time to go zoom, people. It's zoom time. Come on. Zoom time. There we go. Zoom time. Okay. Looking at the dial here, actually, immediately, there are some signs of things that appropriate your approach quality, that is. You can see here that the indices are what are called applied. They're not just stuck on there. It's not just painted on, um, which is nice, as opposed to, where's my freaking Kabono Dragon here? On this guy, the entire dial is just paint on a brushed metal sort of thing. So that's that's kind of a nice thing, right? I'll take that. So um, that's that's good. Um, Next thing that we can see here is the... Is the Logo actually applied? No, that's just extra drippy paint or something on there. Maybe it's applied. No, no, I think that's just... But anyways, what we can see there is, is we got that going on. Um, Let's go ahead and see if the chronograph function is working, because this has every indication of being what's called a chronograph, Um, where it actually will show you the, uh, the, the, the time. It'll keep track of time. So if I press one of these pushes here, what happens? Nothing happens. Okay, one more time with feeling. Uh, yeah, nothing's happening. Uh, let's go ahead and push the other button, see if that helps. Yeah, that's not helping anything either. Wait a second, it's the little it's the little hand. Okay, that's amazing. So the little hand here is handling our chrono function. <laughs> out at the bottom. So if I press this, yeah, you can see this little hand starts going like crazy. And then the uh, big hand continues doing its normal second thing. And is it actually, it almost looks like it's hitting the markers as it's going around the dial. That's actually kind of impressive. Even if it looks like the markers don't line up on the rehab versus the dial. Okay, so that, 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 that works right there. And then we've got over here some kind of a, uh, this is a 24-hour display. It looks like a 30-minute chronograph. Let's see if the dive bezel actually rotates. That's not so bad. A little bit of backlash, but you know what? Sounds reasonable. Okay. So this is okay so far, right? Screw down crown. This may actually be water resistant, which I hope it is because it's for the open seas, of course. So let's see here. Uh, on the back, let's look at the back side of this thing. One thing I'd like to highlight, though, is holy crap, is this thing beefy. Like, seriously, look at the thickness of this guy. Let's see. Where's my caliper, Rad? Come here, caliper. All right. We are coming in at 0.62 inches, or let's go millimeters, 15.8 millimeters of overall thickness on your little naughty guy here, and that's that's not um that's not unimpressive. And then in terms of overall length, we are looking here at the uh, come on now, 
It's trying hard to get the lugs here. 52.4 millimeters worth of lug. That's that's some pretty impressiveness right there. And the overall size is 44.5, uh, 45 millimeters uh, across. And, you know, this gets at one of, there are many, many, many reasons why you shouldn't be an idiot and shouldn't buy a, a watch of the month sort of subscription thing. But this highlights one of them. This is a watch that if I put it on my, my wrist, um, looks kind of ridiculous. It's a little bit big. Um, the, the lugs are hanging off at the end there. It's just not a great approach. Um, and that's not something I would have chosen for myself ever. But because I did this and they didn't give me any options, like, do you want to watch that's above or below a certain size range? No, it's just they're going to send you whatever. Um, that's kind of less than ideal. And so I just paid 99 bucks apparently, for a watch that I just flat out really couldn't wear that well. Um, also, let's weigh this thing because, holy crap, with the uh, full bracelet at full extension here, we are going to come in at... Uh, how do I get this thing to stay on here? That'll do. 7.31 ounces here. That's that's pretty impressive right there, right? I got to say, I'm not... <laughs> Okay. So, um, we also do see that we've got a date window. It's rather deeply recessed in there, but you know what? I can live with that. Let's see if we've got a quick set date function. There we go. Yeah, we're quick set, and that's good. Um, it appears, is it set to the actual time? Which of these watches is the actual time? That's weird. When I pulled the crown out, it, oh, because it's all electronic. When I pulled the crown out, it reset the chrono. That's smart, at least. Um, yeah, and so it is a hacking movement. That's good. That's more than can be said for that sake. Oh, I started off with. Um, you know what? Okay, this isn't so bad. I'm going to be honest with you. Is this a good thing? Should I have purchased this? No, absolutely not. But this isn't actually as bad as I expected. I figured that they would be sending me something that was unmitigated crap, and instead this is just not so stellar. Here they've got themselves a mock helium escape valve to mirror the one that's an actual helium escape valve on the uh, Tuta Pelagos. Mind you, the mock helium escape valve is going to do just as much good for you as the real one is because you're not a compression diver and you don't need that. They are saying this is 50 atmospheres worth of water resistant. That's actually not unimpressive if that's true. Um, and that, so that might be an actual helium escape valve. Mind you, no one will ever know because no one will ever use it, but it's absolutely that kind of a thing. Um, Chris Tully says, yeah, this is on the level of a watch that a random jackass might own and enjoy and not have any problems with and looks fine. You know what? Yeah, that's actually true. If we look at the uh, band here, it's screw down links. The clasp on this is the same clasp that you see over and over again on these kinds of Chinese micro brandy things. Are they calling this Swiss? That's probably one of the things in the bingo card. No, they're not calling it Swiss. All right, that's fine. All right, so you know what? Honestly, is it awful? No, it's not awful. Is it great? No, it's not great. But it is what it is. It's a thing. Um, and so, yeah, there is your, uh, your Nautis. It's for the open seas. So my initial impression here... Oh, Loom! Thank you very much, Grayson Varchetto. Um, Let's check out the Loom. I happen to have my flashlight right here, and so let's see whether we have any Loom going on on the Nautis here. Holy crap, that actually looks like acceptable Loom. Whoa. Okay. You know what? And it's got Loomed... Look at the, the subhands are loomed. Okay, I, I gotta give credit for that. That's something that many, many people do not do. And so I, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that. That's, that's, this may not suck. I mean, it's not great, certainly, but it may not suck. This, this may be okay. Would I have paid $99 for it? Absolutely not. Especially when I can get a much better quartz watch for a little bit less money, but hey. It is what it is. Um, maybe it's sapphire. Do they say anywhere? Is there a manual? Aside from just a card that says no. Because uh, that would be a good manual for this too. Oh, oh, oh. We forgot to check out the warranty card. Nautis for the open seas. Nautis offers a limited warranty covering manufacturer's defects for two years after the original purchase date from an authorized retailer. I wonder if this was authorized. Uh, accidental glass... Okay, that's fine. Oh, you can register your warranty at NautisWatchCo.com. There you go. Is it actually serialized? Uh, no. All right. Well, hey, register your warranty however you would like, my friends. But there you go. Um, this is just not awful. It's okay. It's 
but it's not awful. Um, luckily, though, I know what you're all thinking, but Nick, these aren't that terrible. I mean, they're, they're, they're okay, but they're, they're not terrible. This is true. I'm actually slightly disappointed. I had hoped for much, much worse for the moment from the Nautis here. Um, and so uh, we'll put the Nautis up here aside, let it be on my naughty list for today, uh, and then we'll go on ahead and open up some no uh, some watches, that is, that I know are going to be pretty awful. Um, the first one of which was actually already opened up. Um, but, oh my god, it's it's a thing. Um, that's this little guy right here. This is the Effuti. Um, it's for simple. I know what you're thinking, for simple what? No, you're overthinking it. For simple. So the Effuti here is for simple, and let's go on ahead and for simply open this little guy up here. Oh, I'm destroying everything. Just dropped the warranty card on my foot, and that's okay. Oh man. Um, so let's go on ahead and pop this little guy open. We can see here this is feeling quite heavy. That's that's promising. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Bam. Oh, yes, indeedy. This was sent to me by my wonderful viewer, Chris, who I think just enjoys trolling me. Um, that's kind of a thing. Um, and that's, I'll take it, because this is just spectacular in its, in its execution. Um, what we see here is that this is, uh, skeletonized-ish? Cool. Uh, sport, winner, watch, automatic. Nice. Um, it has... Okay, so a couple of things are bothering me right here immediately. Um, the first of which is that this is a three-hand watch. One, two, and three. What are the chrono pushes doing? The answer appears to be nothing. So that's, that's cool, right? Next thing. There is not a chronograph on this guy. Um... So then why is there a tachymeter? Because recall that a tachymeter measures when you start the chrono running at a certain point and then you stop it when you do the next thing. It measures the, the speed in... in, in uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's just not great. So why do you have a tachymeter on a watch that's not a chronograph? That's, that's a question. Um, next is... What the hell? The bracelet doesn't appear to be adjustable. Okay, it's got arrows here. That's something. Although I'd like to highlight the nature of these arrows. Um, check out the arrows. It looks like the head of the arrow. Like they didn't even align the body of the arrow to the head of the arrow. That's... This one's a winner for sure. Um, they are rug <laughs> stainless steel back. They're, they're just screaming, stainless steel back out into the world. That's that's pretty nice. Um, one thing, I wonder if it hand winds. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Where the heck's my zoom lens at? Come on, a few D out of my way here. Oh, no, I needed that. Never mind. I shouldn't be chucking that up behind me. Uh, where the heck is my zoom lens, people? I'm just, I'm a mess. Oh, here it is. Got it. All right. So, uh, folded bracelet, yeah, that's a thing. But one thing I'm kind of curious about, take a look at this. Right there in the back, here, I'll, I'll, I'll grab a little, this guy, and kind of gesture with it. Right here in the back, that's the mainspring. That's what's actually storing the energy for this watch. So, uh, that's, by letting that uh, energy basically out of that mainspring, the watch is able to uh, function and run. So, if this hand winds, what we're actually going to see is that mainspring is going to be pulled forward. It's like going to be pulled tight into the center. So, let's see. Holy crap, it is. And, in fact, we can actually see the mainspring being wound as I do this. Okay. Well, it hand winds. That's more than could be said for that little Seiko over there. So that's that's something. Nice. So, okay, we're hand winding. That's good. Uh, does the movement hack when I pull out the, 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 the crown? Does it stop the second hand? Nope. All right. Well, again, it, it, it's right in line with that Seiko. Uh, let's go ahead and keep winding here. Yeah, looks about fully sprung, much like Sir Mix a lot when a girl walks in with an itty bitty wet. Never mind. So that's good. I'm still curious about this bracelet. If there's any way to get those links out of there, I'm kind of thinking there aren't. Uh, there isn't. Let's take a precision tool here. 
This is a um, tack. And let's take this and let's take my other precision tool, which is a Leatherman Wave. Okay, that's good. See, uh, we're kind of making a little bit of progress there. We could, in theory, if we wanted to, potentially get this out of the bracelet. Ah, that's going to suck, but you know what? It'll do. It Okay, so it's it's usable in that domain. That's that's pretty nice. Um, Then on the back side, yeah, we've already looked at that. The clasp on it is sort of your standard Chinese clasp. Um, by the way, let's check out this guy versus your uh, Nautilus here. And we can see here that the clasp is actually identical. Well, no, not quite. They're not identical. There's a little bit of distinction here, a little bit of difference. But practically speaking, they are made roughly the same way. So again, this is the level of quality that we're looking at here. Bracelet on this guy at least has real links, but okay. So um, we, we do not have a winner here, that's for sure, although technically we do. Let's go on ahead and check this out on the time grapher, and let's see where we're at. So we're fully wound right now, and let's go ahead and pull this out and drop this into position here so you all can see what's going on. Come on. Get out there. There we go. Beat rate auto detect. Drop this on, and... Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, we're running negative 23 seconds per day in this position. That's not promising. Let's go ahead and move it down a little bit here. Change the position up. Uh, that has changed this to negative 22 seconds per day. All right. Crown down. That's actually not as bad as I thought. I figured you'd get more positional variation. We're doing okay here. Negative 22 seconds. Of, oh, now we're negative five. Holy crap. So, okay. Um, that's, that's a big distinction. And let's go ahead. Rotate up this way here. Negative two. Oh, man. So, if you keep your wrist... Uh, let's see here. Yeah, if you keep your wrist vertical all the time, then you're going to be okay. The amplitude is, yeah, a little weak. Let's be real here. Oh, man. Um, and But then when we go back to this position up here, not looking so stellar. Are we still at negative 23? Okay. No, no, now we're at negative 15. That's actually more frightening. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is a thing. Yeah. All right. So we're looking someplace between negative 23 and negative 2. Zero? Really? No. No, 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 no. That, that doesn't even make sense. It's just getting confused here. That is not zero. Zero is flat. Negative 27 seconds per day. Okay, good. It samples every eight seconds. So, yeah, that's, that's not... It could be worse. I mean, yeah. It could be worse, but it is certainly not great. All right, so there's that. Um, we have ourselves a winner here. And now our little time grapher will shut off. So, okay, moving on. Um, the next one that's going to be, well, I don't know. Um, this one came out of the package already. It shipped to me in a little envelope, and I didn't even know that it was going to be a watch, so I opened it on up. But actually, i got to be honest, at first blush, this is not bad. This was another, I want to say, $20 knife, or a knife. $20 watch. You can tell I was reviewing a knife earlier this uh, afternoon here. But actually, practically speaking, this is not an unattractive watch whatsoever. Here, I'll clean off the, the crystal here for you so you can see it. This is actually, this is not actually that unattractive. I mean, polishing-wise, it's it's pretty okay. You can see it here in the background. The dial on it is not bad. It's got a date window. That's That's good. Crystal seems fine. The, the, the little bit of shades of Patek there and the leathering. The leathering. Lettering. The band is actually substantially nicer than the um, your, your, your Komodo Dragon here. So that's that's certainly something. Oh, Komodo Dragon. Whatever. So that's not so bad. Um, mechanical stainless steel mechanical. So it is a stainless steel mechanical stainless steel mechanical. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, and we can actually see the movement in the back there, which implies that there is a movement in this watch. And we can see the balance wheel going. That's that's cool. Um, let's see here. And it 
seems like it's hand winding. Let's see if we can see that in action. Come here. Yeah, there you go. When I turn the crown, you can see it's winding up in there. Nice. Can't argue with that so much. So, I mean, honestly, is this uh, great? No, but yet it's not unattractive. And we have a very janky-feeling quick-set date mechanism, which is good. You can see the date is changing there as we go. Shake it harder, okay? Nothing happened. Fan service, what can I say? Um, and then, let's see, does it hack? It does not hack, okay. Well, again, I could live with that. No, actually, I personally can't. But you know what, for 20 bucks, okay, whatever. Not a, not a huge deal. Um, yeah, so, will the date actually change? Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Keep going. Man, this is weirdly geared. Yeah, 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 look, the date's changing. Holy crap, it actually functions. All right, but the big question, the million-dollar question, actually the $20 question here is, is it actually going to keep time worth a damn, or is it going to keep time, well, yeah. So let's go ahead and drop this guy on the graph of here, and let's, let's see what we got going on. Drop this here, and... Beat rate auto detect. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, that's not looking so good. Plus 42 seconds per day, my friends. Oh, yes, indeedy. Let's go ahead and try a different position, just in case that's the problem here. And we would expect this line, by the way. You can see that it's sort of ticking across there. We expect that to be straight and easy. Like, again, let me demonstrate with a watch that is worth a damn. Let's grab the, uh, where's the two of that? Here we go. So see here, once it detects the beat right here, give it just a second. See, almost straight across there. And the detect and talk are right on top of each other. See, this is how a good watch should look. And let's throw the winner back on here. Is this winner as well? Yeah, this is also a winner. Nice. All right, throw old man winner back up on there. Oh, yeah, this is going to be great. Giving the Seiko 5 a run for its money. Yeah, but the thing is, this is 20 bucks. The other one's 60. At least, oh, 41. Uh, try a different position, maybe. Sometimes that can be helped. What the hell just happened there? Yeah, still 41. Maybe. Could this help? Uh, it's changed things. Maybe it's less of a train wreck? I'm not sure. No, it still sucks. Oh, no, 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 plus 16. Okay, that's good. We're, we're making progress here. That's all I have to, that's all I can ask. Okay, top down. Oh, that's, that's not great either. But it looks like the accuracy's getting better. Maybe. Plus 18, no. Face down. Eh, this is this is pretty rough. Could be magnetized. I don't think it's gonna be magnetized on this guy. Plus twenty-three, yeah. So again, we got ourselves a watch that's actually not super unattractive, but um is absolutely not going to be accurate. It's not going to keep time well. And, you know, so that's kind of the, the that's your, 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 your trade-off there. You can get something very pretty and very crappy, or you can get something that, you know, keeps time well and uh, he, he you pay a little bit of money for. Hold on, let me wipe this sweat out from under the Batman mask, which is really not a uh, statement I expected to be making in front of 200 people at earlier points in my life. Then finally, I've really, I've, I've saved what I believe to be the worst for last. Um, Oh, don't need this at the moment. Instead, we have... Uh, I'm actually going to, I'll present this guy to you flipped over to start with, because I, I feel like this is its most attractive angle. What we have here is all stainless steel. All stainless steel. And then what we have here is clearly a, a chronograph, because you've got two pushes here and then a little crown going on. Um, and we've got ourselves Jaraga, which sounds kind of like the... Um, uh, like a villain from, like, uh, the Aladdin. Was that Jerigo? No, that was Jafar, wasn't it? Either way. Um, so let's go on ahead and uh, flip this little guy over and see just how awful things can get. Ready? Here we go, here we go, here we go, and... Bam! Oh, yeah. That's... 
that's some quality right there. So um, we're going to have to zoom on in on this to, I think, fully appreciate what's going on. I mean, to start with, they've got... To start with is just this whole affair right here. Um, Triangular-shaped watches are a bold move, uh, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Um, and indeed, I don't think it's going to. But what we've got here are a pair of hands. Actually, it looks to be a three-hand watch. Plus, it looks like there's a 24-hour sub-dial down here. Is that a... That's the date. So this is not actually a chronograph. There's just the, 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 the three hands, and then here's the date window. Uh, well, the date, that is. And then... What's this? Oh, it's divided by seven. That must be the day of the week. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull the crown out. Let's see if it hacks. Yeah, oh, God, and then the polishing here. And it's telling me 20, but that's it, roughly the 15 position. It's not a rotating bezel. Ay, ay, ay. Um, that's certainly a thing. Let's go ahead and pull out the crown here and see... Is this a screw down crown? Oh no, this just this part isn't part of the crown. Yeah, there we go. Pulled out. Okay, so it's not a hacking movement. That's fine. I can live with this. Does it hand wind? Sounds like it's hand winding. That's good at least. Again, one up on that Seiko. Um, oh man. Now let's uh okay, so we got that we're able to adjust the time this way. If I go backwards, does the second hand stop? No, that's nice. Okay, again, we're, we're, we're one up in there. But okay, so then we've got our pushes, and this is not a chronograph, so my bet is that one of these is going to adjust the date, one of these is going to adjust the day. So, if I press this one, oh, I bet that's the quick adjust and it's complaining because I'm, it's between, here, I'll, I'll make it 6 a.m. just in case. Okay, now if I press this, oh, look at that, look, it's, it's, when you press that, it cycles through the days of the week backwards, which is really helpful in case you need to move back in time. Okay, well, it's a Saturday, so let's go ahead and move this to six. Um, on the other side there, we should have... Oh, yeah, okay, cool. So it is... What the heck day is it? I've got a million watches, none of which is set to the right time. 27th. Today is the 27th. Okay, so we'll give it another click. There we go. We're set in. All right, and then, yeah, this is a mechanical, so accuracy is going to be a question. Um, one of the questions that I have here is loom. It looks like these hands uh, should be loomed, so let's go ahead and check that out right quick. Come on. Are we loomed or are we not? It looks like, actually, the hands are loomed. Which is nice. If if is it good loom, I'm not sure. Actually, looking closely at it, I am actually quite sure it's not good loom. Yeah, let's show you what good loom looks like. Actually, here I'll show you what good loom looks like on this little guy. This is decidedly not a crappy watch. This is the um, Monta Watch Triumph. So you can see that's uh, not Triumph. This is the Monta Watch Ocean King. Um, you can see here that this is glowing quite nicely. Whereas this guy here. Not doing so swinging, but okay, whatever. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, this is actually cost certified. Maybe this is a, a chronometer right here, a chronometer grade triangular movement. Um, let's go ahead and drop this guy on the time grapher and see what we have to learn. Okay, beat rate auto detecting. Plus 48, okay, plus 50. change the position a little bit. Actually, that beat error is a little better. That's nice. Still plus 50. Okay. Let's see here. I'm gonna... I'm, uh, this one I'm wondering whether it might, because it seems to be keeping reasonable <laughs> plus 88 seconds a day. It seems to be keeping reasonable time here. But I'm wondering whether maybe, just maybe, this is actually magnetized, whether that could be my problem. Unfortunately, I don't have a plug-in for the demagnetizer right here, so uh, let me plug this in, and I'll have to do that off-camera here. But I hope desperately that this crappy demagnetizer doesn't fry everything in life. As I plug it in and fire it up here. All right, demagnetizing. Oh yeah. 
All right, let's put it back on the time grapher and see if that was the problem. Demagnetized thoroughly. And... Psh, that ain't right. Well, oh yeah, plus 67 seconds a day. Okay, <laughs> my friends, this is not magnetized. This is just a terrible freaking watch. Um, that's that's really impressive. Um, that means that this watch will run one minute per day fast. Um, which is not really something that's super acceptable unless you happen to be a Seiko 5 fanboy. I'm sorry, I'm really knocking on them, but those just ah, it bugs the crap out of me. So um that's really not super impressing me. The real question that I have here is okay, so um this case here is um you can see you've got are those Phillips screws under there? Okay. Let's give it a shot. Do I have a little tiny Phillips bit? I do. Will that work? Oh, yes, it will. My friends, we are going to do a live disassembly here. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. Pop that out. I'm going to see if I can regulate this watch here live on the channel and get it to be a little less crappy. Maybe... Is this coming loose, or is that just... Come on. Come loose. There we go. Let's see if we can make this suck a little bit less. Because this is always the argument that mechanical watch people, especially cheap mechanical watch people, like to make, which is that, oh, well, yeah, Nick, out of the box, it's terrible, but if you regulate it, it gets better. And absolutely, you, you probably can uh, regulate it and make it a little bit less... T okay. So what we've got here is actually a mechanical watch movement. Um, I know, weird, right? So you've got this big um, plastic case that's holding the movement in place. You've got here, this is the balance wheel. Um, actually, I can zoom in a little bit, maybe make this a little better for you all. So we've got right here, this is the balance wheel of the watch. And so that little guy rotating around is what's winding this guy. And in fact, as you see here, can you see it here? Sometimes you can actually see it winding the watch, like you can see gears rotating as you spin it. But it doesn't seem to be the case here. So that's okay, I can live with that. Underneath there, what we have here is the balance wheel. So this little guy right here, going back and forth, he's keeping time. That is what makes a mechanical watch tick. Um, and in fact, all of this appears to be metal, which is impressive to me. I figured they'd be putting some kind of plastic in the movement itself. But you know what? Um, it, it seems to be going okay. And then on top of that, they've no doubt got some kind of works or another to advance. Yeah, because you can see here it's got multiple layers there. So to advance the date, these little pushes are going up under there. Yeah, beautiful. But okay, so the real question, though, is whether I can improve the accuracy of this piece of crap by uh, adjusting the movement a little bit here. So let's go ahead and put this guy open on the time grapher here. So this way we should be able to see things. Oh, take this guy off. It's aluminum foil. Could well be. And Actually, I'll just put this over here so that way you guys can still see and I can get into the watch here. Okay, so I'm watching the movement here. Watching, eh, eh? And we are very, very inaccurate. Remember, this should be a straight line, and it really, really deeply isn't. There we go. Eh, okay, I'm trying over here. I really am. All right, that'll do. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to try and do here is to adjust the movement very gently here to try and change... The, uh, the, the the characteristics here to slow it down a little. Well, in this case, I need to slow it down a little bit. So let's go ahead and try and grab this little guy. This little lever here should allow me to change the speed of the movement. So by po pushing that lever just a little tiny infinitesimal amount here, that should actually affect the speed of the movement pretty substantially. So now we're up to plus 54. Okay, that didn't help us too much. Yeah, let's actually change this guy. Yeah, we'll keep that there. All right, so maybe I need to push it a little bit more. Okay, pushing it a little bit more here. Let's see what that does for us. Okay, now we're at 61 seconds a day. So clearly I'm going in the wrong direction here. So let's go backwards. Again, I'm just adjusting this little bit right up here. When we go backwards, we should see you up there. Should see it start to lose. No, this is still shitty. I'm sorry, unfortunate. 
Yeah, this should slow it all the way down. Let's see if that's any better. Is this movement just that bad? Plus 68. Is this even doing anything? Is pressing this lever changing anything? Like, does anything matter anymore? Like, I don't think so, but... Come on. Okay, I'm going to try going all the way the other way. That's maybe a little... Okay. That might have gone a little too far, so let's go this way. There we go. Maybe. So, okay. Well, we've improved it. Um, now we're at negative 299 seconds per day. That's, that's a step. Let's speed it up a little from there, right? We can only go, we can only get better. At least we slowed it down a little. Come on. Work. Come back to life, damn it. Something ain't quite right here. Something is deeply not right. Like, I'm sure there's a watchmaker right now watching this and just going like, oh my God, you dumb air. Uh, you dumb human, you. Do I need to wind it more? Is that what's going on? Am I running out of steam? Yeah, let's wind it up a good amount. See if that's helping us any. Actually, watch. See, look, as I'm winding it, you can see those little gears turning. Like the little gears that should have been turning when I ordered, or uh, when I signed up for a watch of the month thing and prevented me. Okay, so let's see here. Try one more time. Come on. Still negative 304. All right, one more time. Now we should be, we're, we're moving f further up now. Oh, okay, it is in line. It's just going so, it's so slow that we can't even tell. All right, that should have sped it up pretty substantially. Right there. Am I just screwing this up? I mean, is that possible, really? So now I'm all the way forward, and it was still... Negative 304. Ay, ay, ay. My friends, um, this is actually an important life lesson here. Um, should this... Oh, that's why. The shorter bar is moving too. One of these is holding the hairspring. The other one should just be providing the timekeeping. But by ch moving this little short one, that's why we've gotten so screwed up. By moving the little one along, we're causing two separate little areas of pain here. So let me move the little one back further along here, where it belonged. By doing that, I'm hoping that we're going to be back in business here. Come on. Okay. Well, on the bright side, we're now at plus 387. I don't... Is that progress? We're now sucking slightly in a different direction. You're moving the wrong lever, jackass. Ay, ay, ay. See, you can't move one without moving the other, which is nice. Maybe if I have two tools? Now we're plus 399. Here we go. How about this? Could that work? Are we closer to real? Please function. Eh, could that be better? Now we're at negative 107. My, we are making progress here. We are making progress. Okay. So now, by moving the two of them together, one of these levers, by the way, should not be moving if I understand anything about watches. Aside from the fact that you should not get into them. So, okay. Now I've made that little tweak. Maybe this is going to help here. I'm hoping desperately that this is... No, nope, negative 359. All right, trying again. Let's move this guy forward here. Okay. <laughs> Keith says, I love me some Nick, but I am never sending him my watch for service. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, this ain't going so swinging. I'll give you that 100%. That's why I'm doing this on a $20 watch rather than cracking open that tutor over there. All right. 
negative 444. Okay, that's not quite where I wanted to go. Yeah, let's move this back. I wonder if that could be the issue. Okay, 330. Whoa, okay, hold on. Look at this. Look at this. We have what appears to be a regular pattern again. So, okay, if I keep this guy still and I move this guy forward, maybe this will speed. Yes, look at this. We're at fit plus 54 again. Holy crap. I'm making progress here, my friends. We are back to where we started. Okay, now I got to uh, gotta move it further back. How do I go further from here? Because there's a plus and a minus, but it doesn't seem to care. Okay, that moved the little one as well, but let's see where it gets us. And we're in hell. All right. So, yeah, that's a problem. Let's move the little one back to where it needed to be. Now, plus 604. Okay. We were very briefly making progress there. If this little one gets into the right position here, that should um, pay attention to the lines here. That almost looks better. Yeah, okay, 426. Yeah, that's a straight line. That's a straight line at 426, okay. Oh, man. This is why... Yeah. I have all the respect in the world for a good quality watchmaker. I am not among them. Okay, ho hold on. We were doing good for a second there. We had 181 seconds. Okay. Got that moved back. Where the heck is the cursor even at? Ay, ay, ay. If I get this back put together, I'm going to be absolutely blown away. Okay. This seems to be... We're making progress here. So I'm going to try not moving that big one and just moving the small one. Maybe that'll change. Why don't you just walk into a tri carburetor cleaner? Yeah, that's my next step is just throw some WD freaking 40 in here and call it a day. Oh, man. Let's move this back. See if that helps. Okay. 461. No, that did not help. I'd love to see the, the like the live stream of an actual freaking watchmaker watching this and just being like, oh my God, what is this dumbass doing? That would be just really entertaining to me. So if you happen to be an actual freaking watchmaker, I encourage you to ke keep an eye on this, this space right here. Okay, this is an improvement here. At the very least, it's more regular, so that's good, right? Uh, plus 452, okay. So now if I keep this from moving and I'm going to try and manipulate this one here by spreading those two apart, 151. Okay, we're making progress here, people. We're back down towards something that sucks a little bit. Well, hold on. Did we lose it? Yeah, we lost it. Well, I lost it a long-ass time ago. Let's be real with this. Whoa there, as I destroy everything. Yeah. There we go. All right, I'm so close here. I can taste it. I can taste the victory. And I will soon be snatching from the jaws of defeat. Little tiny adjustment there, because the slow and steady wins the race, is what the freaking turtle learned or something. I'm not up on my kids' stories these days. All right, 209, 217. Okay, let's, let's just... One more time here. I'm going to try moving this little guy this way. See what that does for us. This would be a lot easier if I just had one lever. Oh, man. Oh, I think we just went sharply negative. Yeah, I think we just went negative. Maybe? It's better. That's an improvement. In terms of the pattern, no, it's still plus. Okay, so now one more time. I'm gonna try and, ah, uh, no. Try and move that right there. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ne negative 10. Negative 10. Look, 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 look. No, stay. No, damn it. We lost it. That's not negative 10. Is that negative 10? Holy crap. I can almost live with that. Oh. Oh, that was so close. I was almost there. Okay. Maybe. Come on. Nope, that got worse. No, never mind. Backing away. Whatever I just did there, not a good idea. Oh. Might have just hit the hairspring. That looks good. This looks good. Plus 76. We're good. Other lever is for beat correction. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to knife disassemblies for damn sure. Plus 76. Okay, I'm, I'm almost there. I am so close to there. This is... Just a second here. This is... No. Ah, oh, damn it. I screwed it up again. Little tiny differences here are causing me all sorts of pain. I'm, I'm really close here. I'm really, really close. Oh, man. Well, the watch is open. Do you want to see where those pushes go? They go right into my personal hell. Okay, negative 76 and negative 51. In terms of averages, I'm doing re real good. I'm right close to zero. So that's something. Whatever I was just doing was making a difference here in life. Negative 25 seconds per day. This is good. Uh, I think I lost it. Negative 25, maybe. Ah, plus 75. Holy crap, little tiny differences here. Okay. Maybe. Oh, no, that was the wrong direction. Oh, wait, was it? I have no freaking clue what that was. Yeah, that was wrong direction. Hold on. I am so close. All right, guys. I know this is probably just agonizing to watch. Yeah, the Z Hunter is laughing at me because now I'm finally dealing with something worse than that. Oh, my God. 149 now. Oh, I long for the easy days when it was like 150 or something like that. Okay. I. You know what? I'm so very, very close to giving up here. It's not even funny. But uh, it's tantalizing you. That's the problem here. If it was just like, nope. You're an idiot. You got nothing. That would be easy. But this is like, I'm, I keep getting so close. I, I want, uh, so close yet so far. Stick to acoustics, Nick. But this is acoustics. It's a, it's a pendulum. It's a, it's acoustical in nature. Uh, this, this should be my field. Ay, 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 ay. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> like I'm going to be able to get help with this. Oh. Like, I feel like Googling it. Like, I opened up my watch. What the hell did I thinking? I have problems here. Oh, hold on. This looks good. This looks good. This looks much better. I think I've just helped myself a little bit here. Whatever I just did was good. We may be within the Seiko zone of things that people pretend is acceptable. 40 plus 40. This is an improvement. Seriously, look at this. I have improved the situation. It used to be at like 47. Now it's at 40. I am much, much, much better. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Batman, call Robin. Yes, indeed. Okay, so a little tiny adjustment here, I think, should do the trick. So I'm going to go ahead and just poke the slightest amount. D did this change anything? Did my life get any better? No. Yes? Maybe. Could be. I think my life got a little better. Plus 38. I'm making, bi I'm in business here. All right. I'm going to keep this steady. Ah, damn it. Poke a little further. No. No, hold on. No, I completely butchered that. Hold on. Let's try this again. that second lever that keeps betraying me. I was at plus five for a, a cycle there. Now I'm at like negative 284 again. All right. So there is a perfect medium here somewhere. 
but I don't find it. <laughs> Lock tight the second lever in place. Oh, that could be an approach. Because let's face it, the... Wait, hold on. Guys, this doesn't look bad. This doesn't look bad at all. Oh my God. This is plus five seconds per day. I am okay with that. I am, please stay, stay. Don't change, don't change, don't change, don't change. Plus three. Okay. We're good. All right, here we go. Case freaking closed. Quite literally, I need to close this case before this betrays me. Okay, here we go. Putting the case on here. All right, uh, come on, come on. Which way does this thing even go on? Does this even go back on? Ay, ay, ay. This is... Okay, where's my screwdriver? Here's my screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on there. Oh, hallelujah. I've broken the machine. <laughs> So, my friends, this is actually a very important lesson here. Watchmaking is a trade. It is a craft. It is something that people who actually go to school for this do. And there is a reason for that. Because I am an idiot. And it, when I try to watchmake, that's what happens. You just saw that. Just talking about Yuri Geller fixed it. Yeah, indeed. So even though after some agonizing amount of time, I was able to get this guy back into chronometer grade specs here, uh, that did not go so swinging by any stretch of the imagination. All right, yeah, people are asking me to test it again once the case back is on. We'll see. Hold on. Uh, here we go. Moment of truth. Come on. Cosk certified. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Plus 12 seconds a day. I can live with this. I can do plus 12. Plus 9. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nick Shabazz certified. That's not Cosk. Yeah, let's go back to this position. Maybe this position's better. Yeah, this position's better. I like this position. This is a good position for me. Negative five. That's that's so close to cost. I I, I I am damn near a chronometer. What do you call somebody who makes a chronometer? <laughs> Thanks, Keith. I appreciate that. Plus four. Plus four. We are nearly. Oh, damn it. No, negative eight. Okay, we're not gonna. We're not paying attention to that position. That position is bad. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, maybe? Plus 19. We're not paying attention to that position. That's a bad position. Nope. Uh, this looks promising, actually. Yep, this is promising. Negative 6. You know, I, I, I'm feeling like the problem here with modern watchmaking is actually not at all the fact that I'm completely unable to do it. Um, plus two. There we go. We are within cost spec, my friends. We have created a chronometer here, except cost has multiple, you know, positions and things like that. Um, we have created all sorts of crazy accuracy out of out of nothing. We have gone, and in fact, I will comment on the simple fact that whereas previously this guy was always running plus 45, plus 48, it is now running mostly terrible but you know, in occasion, it's it's pretty okay. So, um, this is, uh, you know, the fact that this was not, you know, smooth or good. Um, yeah, then we're going to put that one aside. And in fact, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use a trick that's older than time itself in the watch industry, which is I'm just going to go ahead and create my new, my own spec. And so my official spec for a gem grade chronometer, um, for a, in fact, not even a chronometer, how about a, a chrono, a, a chrono beast? There you go. This is the gem grade chrono beast specification. Um, it means that in any position, it needs to be, let's see here. Uh, between negative 19 and plus two seconds. But so this is now, after it's been regulated by a jackass, a gem grade chrono beast, a chrono baz, even better. This is chrono baz certified, my friends. And so now this is a watch that I could actually wear. 
That's the cruel thing about this is all of that time was just spent on a watch that I really deeply do not want to have on my wrist. I mean, look at this thing. Okay, so um, my friends, I, 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 there were a few lessons that we can wrap up here for the evening. A few lessons that we can maybe take away from this um, from this session. Um, to start with, do not subscribe. To, <laughs> did it stop? Oh, good. Okay, somebody said it stopped. I was. I was terrified. Um, but uh, first off, you probably should subscribe to Watch of the Month things unless you nix your baz and you, you're just getting watches that, you know, you, you fully expect to be kind of crappy. Uh, because honestly, you know, that, that, that's okay. That could be a fine thing. Um, and this is about what you would expect when you pay $29 to have somebody ship you a watch. Um, so, you know, you should probably not get into watches in general, but especially don't get into subscription watches. Um, then it does get worse, of course. You have to remember, oh, God, I wonder if I could even regulate this. Well, I couldn't regulate the other one, so I don't think I'll be any better off. <laughs> oh, but anyways, um, so the other thing is that when you pay for cheap watches, you get cheap watches. And even if you happen to have an expert watchmaker like myself who is able to produce a, 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 a Chrono Baz gem certified chronometer sort of thing, then uh, even then, it's probably not a great idea to spend this little money on a watch. And then finally, um, the biggest moral of this story is leave watch repair to the professionals. When a random jackass tries it, well, it doesn't go so well. So um, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you. And uh, that you, you enjoyed my trials, my tribulations, and my eventual chronometric victories here. If that can count as a victory. And that you have yourselves, most of all, an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. And by the way, if you're going to buy a watch, just buy a good watch. Anyways, have a good one, everybody. Bye now.